Our next speaker is Dr. Jeffrey Allen. I'm going to introduce him now. He attended Harvard Medical School and did residency and fellowship in Montreal and initially came to NYU in 1986. I hope that's right. His long and distinguished career has focused on neuro-oncology and neurofibromatosis. He helped start the NF Center at NYU in 2008, where he continues to see patients. He is a principal investigator in the NF Clinical Trials Consortium, funded by the Department of Defense. Please welcome Dr. Allen. Thanks, Thank you, Celia. And uh, just so that we don't forget, the, the reason why we're here is that our staff has done such a marvelous job in organizing this. Uh, and I don't see Carol Mitchell here, but uh, that's what she's been doing for the last three months. Um, so the hour is late, and I think I, I will try to be brief. Um, I can tell you that I've been working uh, in this field, taking care of NF patients for over 30 years. And it's never been more apparent to me that the momentum of clinical research has really increased in an astronomic way. And it's now become, a, rather than a, uh, uh, a frustrating field, a very exciting field. I'll try to share some of that with you. Uh, a lot of it is related not only to the advocacy uh, uh, that you heard about earlier, earlier and the um, brokering with uh, 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 patient groups, but the uh, uh, foundations that are supporting us, the advances in the laboratory, and how we have communicated with other centers, not only in this country but around the world. And a number of us are going to Paris in about four weeks to attend a National Neurofibromatosis Society. We have, excuse me. Um, we don't keep secrets in medicine, which is a good thing. So if there are any advances anywhere in the world, they're shared, not only in, in conferences, but also in the medical literature. So I think we have talked about this uh, uh, before, and I won't spend uh, time here only to say that about five or six years ago, in large measure to uh, the uh, um, the uh, advocacy of the Children's Tumor Foundation, we're finally getting organized. And there's now a strong group of what we call <coughs> preclinical research going on, where a number of uh, centers, uh, there are about four or five now, are exploring animal models and cell cultures and looking for new drugs with genes that have actually been uh, uh, mutations of, of, uh, of, uh, of human genes that have been inserted in animals now where we actually can test in real uh, time uh, drugs that uh, may, may be useful. And so that has given uh, the clinical trial group, the NF Clinical Trials Consortium, uh, uh, the ideas to explore uh, promising new drugs. We're very dependent on industry for manufacturing these drugs, and that's been the other part of the equation. So why, why, what, what are the reasons why NF is so important to medicine in general? And uh, why um, science and industry are are um, are, bec are becoming more involved? Well, a lot of the things that Dr. Yohe talked about uh, that uh, NF patients suffer from are not unique to NF. The uh, behavior, aut autism, and uh, um, um, hyperactivity and learning disabilities are ubiquitous. And if we could only discover why they occur such, in such high prevalence in NF people, can you imagine the implications that it might have for uh, the general community? Uh, disorders of development, bone malformations, and the vascular disorders that Dr. Yohei referred to, and the tumors. And it shouldn't be no surprise to you 
that there are a number of what we call sporadic tumors in patients who don't have NF, where an NF gene uh, is altered. NF1 is one of the common uh, uh, muta mutated genes in spontaneous uh, breast cancer and leukemia and brain tumors. And NF2 is altered in 70% uh, of meningi uh, meningiomas and uh, spinal uh, uh, neurofibromas. So if the, if the uh, uh, understanding or the identification of drugs uh, for NF-specific uh, tumors are identified, look at the market for these drug companies. And that's what I think uh, drives this. Now, I'm going to just talk about two uh, challenges, recent challenges, for which we're seeing um, some, I would call, breakthroughs. And you heard a little bit about that. So there are two uh, high-priority areas of, of research for the uh, NF Clinical Trials Consortium. Um, one, of is the, one is the plex for neurofibromas. And these are congenital tumors. They grow inexorably. Depending on their location, they can cause deformations of uh, obvious uh, uh, body features, uh, bony uh, abnormalities, and uh, symptoms. And you heard about their uh, predisposition to uh, malignancy. Uh, but for the most part, we just have to deal with a low-grade tumor. Now, uh, you can see in the lower, uh, 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 your lower left-hand corner, this is a not an operable tumor. It has uh, caused uh, 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 deformity of the spinal, uh, 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 spinal canal there, and uh, you can't remove that. And you can see on the right, there's an extensive multinodular tumor in the abdomen, and it's beginning to compress the kidney. I, I don't have a pointer for you, do I? I don't think so. Is this a pointer? I don't think so. OK. So, uh, so we need medical therapy for this. These are not surgical diseases. And in the uh, gliomas of the brain, <coughs> You heard an excellent talk from Dr. Elkin as to the challenges in identifying them. But when we do find that one in 20 ch uh, uh, ch child who has symptomatic uh, optic pathway gliomas, we need, he needs help. And we do have help. So you can see there is an isolated optic nerve t a tumor. I'm sorry, I can't show that. Nobody has it. A laser here. There on the on the left hand side is the optic nerve glioma, and then there's one on the right hand side, an optic uh, chiasmatic tumor. But these cannot re be removed surgically, so this medical therapy. Now I'm I don't mean to to overwhelm you here, but this has been the reason why the breakthroughs are occurring. The understanding of the signaling pathway as to why uh, people with NF1 are getting tumors and other problems. Uh, on the top, you can see extracellular signals. That's the cell membrane. All the, all the function of a human cell is determined by uh, signaling pathways. It's like your map, uh, Google, getting from one place to the other. And there are lots of switch points. You've got side streets. You've got uh, different highways. But this is the way that, uh, that uh, signaling occurs for NF1. Now look, uh, look on the left-hand side, and you see that NF1 uh, square, and that regulates a, um, a protein, really, determined by a gene called RAS. And it turns out that we have been misled for many years in, in trying to, uh, uh, to medically manage this disease by treating too many upstream enzymes in this pathway. And some ver very brilliant scientists have discovered that the further you get to the nucleus with drug interventions, the more likely you are to affect the biology of this pathway. And you can see that drug, selumetinib, down there. I'm sorry, I don't have a, a pointer. Uh, that's the one you've heard about. And that is called a MEK inhibitor. And the, the ERK inhibitors are too toxic at this point, but uh, so, and they may even be more effective. But if we can alter, we have drugs now 
to uh, basically interfere with that pathway. Now, in NF1 patients, where NF1 normally, in all of us, without NF, serves as a break, a control. In NF1 patients, that break doesn't work. So this pathway is continuously active, all right? And it, it's, it wreaks havoc. And you can see that the uh, many different um, um, outcomes of stimulating that pathway can occur at the bottom. Okay, so let's go. So I have to give uh, credit to a remarkable pediatric oncologist you may have heard of, uh, Dr. Brigitte Wiedemann at the NIH. Um, and she's been a leader in this field for many years. And I also want you to recognize the name you're going to hear more, Eva Dombey, who's her neuroradiologist. And the two of them started um, NF research for many years, uh, as, almost as many as mine. But, uh, and, they, and they came to a lot of dead ends until they found a drug called selumetinib. And uh, they did the first study at the NIH. It was a, a phase one study. We didn't know what the, the safe dose was in children. And in a remarkable paper that was published in 2016, New England Journal of Medicine is the, uh, quite, it's the uh, classic clinical paper for physicians, clinical journal for, for, for physicians. They took a phase one trial and published it. Unheard of. And why? Because in her early experience with 25 patients using trying to find the safe dose to, to this drug, and Dr. Dombey doing volumetric measurements, they found, where do I have it, a 70%, 70, over 70% 70 uh, response rate where the tumors uh, shrunk by at least 20% in a phase one study where the kids, all the kids didn't get the therapeutic dose. So this was a true breakthrough, and I think you heard from a mother this morning, probably one of her, probably her child must have been on this trial. So they wanted, uh, and uh, this is some of the, the responses she reported. And you can see how the uh, plexifer neurofibroma in the left flank and buttock almost came to normal. And look at this. Could you imagine what a miraculous response of this tumor was in the space of a year. Well, we've never seen anything like that. So what's next? Turns out that Array Biopharma discovered selumetinib. They, have, they are now also promoting another MEK inhibitor called binimetinib, which has some, bio, uh, 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 some biochemical advantages for treating Nervous, central nervous system disease. So the uh, NF Clinical Trials Consortium is uh, exploring activity of this enzyme, of this drug, and uh, it's the same company. Uh, the first drug, selumetinib, was actually sold to AstraZeneca, and that is going to be released soon, but it's not available commercially. Binimetinib is actually available commercially. So what about the NF Clinical Trials Consortium? I think you've heard a little bit about this. This is Department of Defense funded. There are now over 13 sites in the U.S. You can see them in two in Canada. And there are allied sites or collaborating sites elsewhere. And this is the, what it looks like nationally. And they have been conducting trials for several years. I'm only going to talk about ones that are either open currently or will be in the next uh, year. And I'm going to share with you the, a new MEK inhibitor I talked to you about, binimetinib, for adult and pediatric plexiform neurofibromas. And a, I'm not going to have much time to talk about this, but another drug that has been uh, 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 vindicated, actually validated for adult plexiforms and will be available for children, a little bit different mechanism of action. So the binimetinib study is um, modeled very, uh, very closely to the way Dr. Wiedemann uh, organized her trial. And we, are, we're, we just opened a trial for adults in the, in the NF Clinical Trials Consortium 
in May. NYU just opened its uh, site to patients with uh, plexiform uh, uh, neurofibromas two weeks ago. And we're just starting to enroll patients. The pediatric uh, arm will be open, hopefully within the next six weeks. And to get on the protocol, you have to have either a progressive uh, uh, plexiform by MRI criteria or some sort of disfiguring tumor, either one. And the adults are treated at a different dose than children. And we do volumetric measurements, and we have, to, we have certain benchmarks. You have to show a 15% decrease in the tumor volume by eight months, and by 12 months there has to be a 20% decrease or we cannot continue the protocol. So, uh, I have to tell you, these drugs are, are probably here to stay. Lots of things we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen long term in terms of side effects for children, maybe even adults. We don't know what happens after you stop the drug. After all, this is a lifetime uh, disorder. And we don't know how to cre create what we call synergy where one and one is equal to three with other medications. All these will evolve over the next, hopefully, five years. So I don't think we have enough time for this, but let me, let me not go through here. So, so for uh, low-grade gliomas, um, the same class of drug can be used, MEK inhibitors, for both non-NF related and NF-related optic pathway gliomas. And uh, Dr. Nathan Robeson, who's a pediatric oncologist at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, through the sponsorship of uh, Array Biopharma, has now opened a protocol where about, probably about 15 other uh, centers uh, are participating. And NYU is one of them. And there are several arms of this uh, trial for treating low-grade gliomas in children. One uh, uh, has to do with uh, non-NF optic pathway gliomas, another has to do with NF-related, and then there are some where we don't know, uh, we don't have histology uh, or biopsies. So let me just show you what's going on. This is once again another, ex this is one of the most exciting uh, trials I've, I've participated in in my career. So this is a trial now for a non-NF-related non optic pathway glioma. This is the first trial they treated on this, or, uh, this protocol, which opened at NYU in February. And this is a kid who had lost vision in one eye. On the left, you can see the starting tumor. She's been on the drug now for nine months. And look at that tumor. I've never seen anything like this. This is an oral medication. All right, and uh, we've had to manage some toxicity, but it, uh, but we've done it. And here's another kid with a brainstem tumor, non-NF, and you can see what's happened here in six months. So I have almost every um, confidence that we're going to be the, able to do the same for children with NF who have op symptomatic optic pathic gliomas. And uh, this is truly a breakthrough. So I think I will stop there. There'll be other questions. I want to keep this uh, short in the interest of time. And uh, I think we've all said the same thing many times. Uh, we have, uh, we are, have this momentum that's not going to go away. And it's really a partnership of the families and the, for, and the uh, foundations and the, and the uh, funding sources and the drug companies. And if you go to an NF uh, annual meeting now, the, N the drug companies are there, okay? So this, is, this has just been a very exciting time. Hopefully we can also continue to train and recruit new science scientists. I'll stop there.